as always, to pray for them uh, as we continue to labor in word and doctrine across the country and across the world. Uh, speaking about across the world, we do have a brother here that's come a very, very long way, a very long way, and uh, we've heard him uh, briefly before, uh, but we want you to sit patiently again to hear a few words from him. Again, uh, before we introduce him, I just want to remind you that let's not forget the exhortation that was given to us uh, moments ago by Minister Aviles. Uh, very, very sound words of encouragement. Let us lay them to heart and not forget them. Is that right? Yes. All right. This time I'm going to present on to you our brother from Queensland, Australia, uh, Minister Mars. Greetings, brothers and sisters in Christ. I give honor to God, true living God, for his divine and perfect understanding of all things. I'm blessed to be here. And give honor to God also to our pastor, you know, Jennings, anointed of God to preach the truth of God to the world in which it has caught my attention. Thank God also for the holy prophets and apostles of Christ we have to teach him unto our time. I'm so blessed to be here and also a witness and a watchman on God's behalf. And what I'm about to share is divine. And I have never come across and seen anything like that in my whole life. I come from an organization called the South Pacific District Council, which is under the umbrella of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World under Bishop T.A. Price in San Jose, California, and which my father is the founder of. We were commissioned into Townsville, Australia in 2010 to pastor and oversee the flock that is in Townsville and Keynes. While we were there, I was starting to lose a lot of weight rapidly until to a stage where I went right down to 60 kilos in which we went to so many doctors and they had a lot of proof say there is nothing wrong with me. But I know very well myself, there is something wrong. Until everything got to the worst state of life in which they found out that I had a grave disease. And grave disease is very rare. Never seen in the WHO in the whole world and grave disease in a reaction of thyroid hormone. And it can cause a lot of trouble when you reach that stage. So they found out what has happened and I went for a checkup and to see what's happening and the doctor said to me, your thyroid have reacted and you only have a little windpipe left. You're going to die, my brother. I said, well, I know I'm serving a living God, but I'll wait and see what God has in store for me. So I went home and told my wife about the situation. They diagnosed me with lymphoma cancer. They had an operation on my throat. Then they went inside to look further. Because of the reaction of the thyroid, they couldn't see inside. But when they found out what's inside, the cancer has spread right throughout the throat. All white, meaning I ain't going to survive that. But they said to me, sir, your battle from now and on was, is going to be difficult. The doctor came to me and my wife and told us, they're giving me 11 weeks to live. So I said, well, let's see what Jesus said. We prayed together. I cried, Lord, if it's your will, let it be. I submit everything unto thee. I got admitted into hospital to go through chemotherapy. And when I was in hospital, they told me it's going to cost me $150,000 for treatment. So I looked to my wife. We didn't have the money at the time. Then I had to look to Jesus, who is the banker. I said, Lord, 
I don't have any finance, so I need your help. But thank God the time when I was uh, admitted to hospital, they had a WHO conference in Townsville. Then my case was brought up into notice in the World Conference, in which they wanted to study this rare reaction in the throat called grave disease. So I went up to the, to the person from here the States, big company, and I said to him, if you want to study it, you got to pay for it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I ain't giving it free. So they paid 150000 for my treatment. And I looked to the bank, I said, thank you, Jesus. This is just one of those options that I'm going to ask you for. I stayed in the hospital for one whole year, free, with the treatment. I had eight hours operation in my throat. They put in a trachea, so I couldn't talk for one whole year. The only speaking therapy I had is my blackboard and my pen. So if you want to talk to me, you talk to me, I write back to you and you read what I'm saying. You see, saints, before I carry on, I'll bring Lamentation 322. It is of the Lord's mercy that we're not consumed. It's because His compassion failed not. And I believe God was doing this to me because He said to me, son, all your life you've been talking too much. Now it's time to shut you up and listen to what I have to say. <laughs> Saints of God, there is two ways God can apply mercy to us. One, we can accept it willingly, or one, he's going to get your attention. And I think that was my option. Because he was putting me into a corner and he said, listen up, it's time to talk to you, say nothing. So I carried on in that, came out of the operation, went into uh, to see the oncology doctor. He said, you're going to go through a sick cycle of chemotherapy. I said, amen, every 14 days, you will get the first one, the sixth, the second and the third. Praise the Lord. I was ready for it. But the day came when we were applying to apply the chemotherapy. I was sleeping on my bed and the curtain was closed. I'm not an asthmatic person. But somehow I started to lose a lot of air and I was grasping for air. So I said, Lord, what's going on? So I pushed the alarm to alarm the nurse. To me, the nurse is coming to my room because I can see the curtain when somebody walks past. It hits the curtain until the entrance. So I waited and waited for the nurse. As soon as the curtain opened up, this air just hit me and I just went black. It wasn't the nurse. It was my other pal. I realized when I woke up, they were resuscitating me. They said, you had an asthma attack and you almost died. And I thought to myself, my Lord, what's going on here? And the doctor said to me after my resuscitation that they found a lesion in my lungs. That means I cannot take chemotherapy because of the radiation, it will kill me because there will be no immune system. So I said to them, so what are we going to do about it, doctor? He said, the only way is we have to puncture your lungs. I said, you're going to put me under sedation? He said, no, you have to stay awake. And I said, how am I supposed to breathe if you're going to puncture my lungs? He said, Mars, this is up to you now. You've got to hold it for a few seconds. So I said, let's do this. See, I thank God for his strength. So I was watching the monitor. They brought this long needle from the side. And I can see the needle moving through my lungs. And they said, me in a few seconds, your lungs will collapse and you got to hold it until we get the lesion that's on the side of your lungs. So I said, all right. 
If it's to live, yes, I'm doing it. So I prayed to God's strength, and all of a sudden my lungs collapsed. But I felt this heaviness. Now I realized what it feels like when somebody gives up the breath of life. Yeah. They cut the needle to the lesion, tried to take it in as soon as and fast as they could, pulled it out and passed it and resuscitated me back again. That's treatment number two. Third, they gave me a lumberjack. Lumberjack is to do with your spine. In a certain position, they inject a real long thin needle into your spine. And they have to hold it and wait for 10 drops of liquid for diagnostic, make sure the cancer has not spread through the spine. After that, I came out of it. They said to me, you're going to get the worst headache of your life. Ten of us went through it. Nine passed away. I, I survived. It is of the Lord's mercy that we're not consumed because his compassion fail not. And I continued on with the street men and I said, Lord, they have to put me on morphine because the, the pain is so, so severe to go through these things. And I went through it and I said, Lord, give me strength. I continue in it. Then finally I got cleared to take chemotherapy. I started my first, my second, my third, the fourth. The doctor said, your body cannot take it and you're not going to make it Mars. You're not going to make it. So they took me in the room. I spoke to my wife about it. There's a lot of contradiction that's going on. But let's see what God says. They said, your time of living is getting shorter from 11 years and being brought closer. Because the body is really handling a lot of chemicals which I have to take 25 pills a day. And they have to take blood out of my arm, both arms. They were both black. Even got to a stage, there's no blood left. And I was battling with it so much and a lot of prayer and a lot of fasting. Until it got to the last stage, I was taken and said, into ICU, we cannot come and see you anymore, Mars, because there is something about you that when you breathe, is going to cause a chemical reaction to people, which is TB. I said, Lord, you said cancer and this and that and now TB? The doctor came to see me, my wife came to see me, but this is the catch, saints. My father called my wife with, when I pass away, we're going to bury him behind my house. My wife said, no, I'm taking him home where I come from. So they were having family arguments. The coffin was arranged. And the funeral services was arranged. Praise the Lord. The headstone wasn't planned. They came up to the hospital that night. They said, and my children, Dad, this is the last time you're going to see you. What can I say? So they left home that night. I cried unto God. I said, Lord, this is it. But I'm depending on you. And, and, and this is when I saw God. I woke up in the morning, ready to be transferred to hot spice. I thought I have died. And I, and I cried bitterly and said, I didn't get a chance to say goodbye to my wife and my kids. Saints of God, I woke up from my bed. My body was like this in the air. And the only thing that was holding me is my tracky tube and my feeding tube. It was so tight, it was pulling, and I said, 
I have died last night. I didn't make it. But I realized if I had died, then there would be no Jew. And all of a sudden, saints of God, this bright light just hit through that door and knocked me over. Knocked me over. The main doctor has entered the house. And in a calm voice, he said, Mars, you're going to live. Make sure you live for me this time. Yeah! It is of the Lord's mercy! His compassion fail not! Hallelujah! God's mercy! God's mercy! God's mercy. I, I put myself down with the hose that's holding me. Me and God were having a personal relationship. I went out to the floor and said, The God of Abraham, God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, at your will. After that, I went outside to see my wife. My father was there. The family was there. The doctors were there to give the last result. And my wife said to me, we come to say goodbye. And everything has been arranged and people from different islands where you're going to land are waiting. I told her, what arrangement are you talking about? The arrangement we spoke to you yesterday, the funeral service. I said, I ain't dying tonight. Not today. She said to me, Ma, stop being stubborn. The doctor told us. I said, that's what the doctor told you. But that's not what Jesus told me. It is of the Lord's mercy. His compassion failed not. We argued, we argued. I said, not today, darling. The doctor told you the wrong information. The real doctor said, I'm going to leave. The doctor came to say, we are escorting you to the hospital. I said, no. I want you to take me to the blood oncology. Take some blood out of my hands and test it out. And he said to me, you don't have any more blood, Mars. I said, try it again. So they try it. As skinny as I am, as black as my arms were, that blood does gush through that too. And I said, yeah. And I said to them, you let me know what the blood says. And they came back a few hours later. They were talking to my father. They were talking to my wife. They all came to me and said, what happened in there? I told them, it's got nothing to do with you. It's between me and God. Mercy! The Lord's mercy! If fail or not, it is of the Lord's mercy. I ain't dying today. I went home, after a few months of mouth therapy, I had to eat. 
And after the doctor confirmed that I would not speak again, everything started to repair itself according to the creator that created me. It put my immune system back. It got rid of the hormone reaction. It got rid of all sorts of stuff that God was cleaning me up for. And after that healing says, I never turned back. I went to our first conference and we had the presiding bishop from the PAOW there. Mr. Ellis, if you have heard of him. All the pastors together gathered and they prayed over pastor because of the healing miracle. And then the presiding bishop prophesied. He said, Pastor, something big is coming. I can feel it, but I can't see it. I can feel it. Something about you, you are going to stir up a big thing here in the Pacific, but I can't see it. Today, I got the confirmation. That's why you can't see it. Because it was not made for you. And since I saw the Apostle Dino Jennings on YouTube, for the first time, when he came pointing at that screen and pointing and pointing, I said to my wife, this guy is talking to me. And then she said, what are you talking about? That's how I preach. No, he's talking to me. I realized, now I compared the vision the presiding bishop had and the truth of God that I saw. Now I told her, this is the very thing that God was telling me in my room. He said, Mars, I'm going to get you to leave and I'm going to give you something that you have never seen before. Saints of God, ever since I started to apply the truth of God, there was a big stir in the South Pacific. So that was the prophecy fulfillment. Today as I stand here, I have been persecuted big time because people are getting saved in the Pacific. From that day, I gave God, God gave me that miracle in my room. Before I close, Emails has been sent to churches. No contact with Pastor Mars. Been persecuted, so be. And through our families, we have disconnected because of the truth of God. But it doesn't matter, really. Because your persecution has no effect on me at all. See, what I went through that persecution is nothing at all. Because God's mercy was more and he was preparing me for something that's coming. God was preparing Pastor Mars for the truth of God. He said to me, get out of that. I'm giving you this. And I'm so blessed to be here. And I'm blessed to meet you all in Jesus' name. Bless you all. Yeah. Can we all say amen? Can we say amen again? Certainly we're thankful to God for the testimony of uh, Pastor Mars from Queensland, Australia. Uh, certainly you heard a testimony of a miracle. My God, and certainly uh, it's good to hear, is it not? Because uh, the scripture says God is a healer, is that right? My God, we're certainly grateful for him. Thank God. Time is far spent. We're going to go into and ask another brother to be very brief. Again, he's a new brother that we have not heard before, haven't met him before, met him for the first time, and that's uh, Minister Martinez from Orange County, California. Greetings, brothers and sisters. 
I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. A little short summary of my testimony, what God has done for me. I want to thank God first for the truth of God. Thank God for Pastor Gino Jennings. Thank God for allowing me to be here and allowing my wife to be with me. Don't know where she's at. Around. She's probably around here somewhere. But I was here a little earlier than she was. Uh, I grew up in the Pentecostal church, women preachers, and all the above, and I'm sure you know the rest. Uh, I grew up in gang territory in Santa Ana, Orange County, on 5th and Jackson. I don't know if you guys know where that's at in Santa Ana. But, you know, I, I've been to the jails. I've been to the prisons. I should be doing 25 to life right now. <laughs> but God had mercy upon me. <laughs> I should be locked up in a cell right now doing 25 to life. I got two strikes on me. And I did my time in prison, and I was still running around like a knucklehead. Even when I got out of prison, still running around with, uh, you know, doing whatever I was doing. And whatever I was doing, I should, I should have been back in prison plenty of times. A little short summary, in my apartment one day, I was in my mess and I went to the kitchen, I put my hands on my countertop and I looked up to heaven and said, I'm God, I'm tired. I'm tired of being tired, I'm tired of living in sin. I served the Lord for a very, very, very long time. As I was young, I grew up in foster homes group homes, all that. I grew up in around drugs. I grew up around prostitution. I grew up around alcohol. My family were gang members. My mother was an alcoholic. My mother was uh, uh, in prostitution. My mom was uh, a heroin addict. My uncles, my aunts, they used to fight who's gonna shoot up first. I seen all of that. And I just want to encourage each and every one of you to stick to holiness. Because the Bible says, without holiness, no man shall see God. And I thank God for all the ministers here. It's such a blessing to be around such men of God. Amen. People who are real about serving God, because each and every one of us, we need that. And I thank God for Brother Williams, such a man of God, and for the brother who gave such a strong testimony. I thank you for that. It's such an encouragement. That should be encouragement for each and every one of us. And this is your first time here in Philadelphia. I've been here in the convocation. If this is your first time here, and your life is not right with God, you need to get right because his coming is soon. You might think, well, all this stuff is happening. He's been, people have been saying, well, he's, he's not coming yet, but he keeps saying that he is, but he's coming. Trust and believe he's coming, and I encourage you, if you're not right with God, get right tonight, not tomorrow, not next year, not next week. Get right tonight, because you never know None of us in here, I promise, tomorrow. But I thank God for each and every one of you, brothers and sisters. God bless you. All right. Thank God for Minister Martinez from California. As always, we're so grateful for the ministers. I mentioned being in prison, and uh, certainly this gospel will put you in prison and set you free at the same time. I right, God. Thank God for it. My God. This time we're going to present unto our leader, teacher, and guide, messenger of the Almighty God, the Apostle, Pastor Gino Jennings. Greetings, brothers and sisters. We bear witness this evening there is no God but one. <clears throat> There is no God with him. There is no God 
Besides him, there is no God equal to him. There is no God greater than him. God have no rivals. God have no partners. God have no equals. He's God alone. It is a blessing. No, you can leave them over there. Leave everything over there and you can set it up over there. It's a blessing, brothers and sisters, for you to be here at this closing year convocation and to you that are watching upstairs, we thank God for all of you. Someone sent me word and want to know that those that are upstairs, if they want to come down and stand, could they? Yes, you can. <laughs> if you don't want to be upstairs and you want to come down and stand, you can come and line yourself up against the wall. If you're an elderly brother, then one of the young brothers will give up their seat. If you're a sister, well, you automatically have a seat. But the brothers will surrender it to you. I am grateful for all of our ministers from so many parts of the world. And we must say that God has been good to us this year. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> we were scheduled to have a discussion tonight on the so-called Trinity. <laughs> but uh, he backed out, which I'm not surprised because we had a good, a very, very good whipping laid up for him with the Bible. And even though he's not here to back up something that cannot be proved, we're going to itemize this this evening. And I want to work on the, the so-called Trinity and show us the religious propaganda that was used to promote the Trinitarian theory. I must say I enjoyed the testimony that was given by the brothers. And I'm pretty sure all of us were greatly encouraged by the testimony given by our beloved brother from Australia, Pastor Mars. That testimony have proven to any unbeliever that God still is a healer. There's no maybe so about that. God is a healer. I believe the Lord said he's the same yesterday and today and forevermore. Now I want to greet all of our viewers that are watching throughout Australia, throughout New Zealand, throughout the South Pacific all of you in Canada, throughout America and Africa, and to every country that is watching this morning, this afternoon, and tonight, whatever time you see this program live in your area, I want you to contact your pastor, contact your members, and I really want you to pay attention to this message tonight on the so-called Trinity. You have more Trinitarian believers than one God believers. And I want the world to pay attention because we're going to debunk this with the scriptures. So you that are coming down who don't want to be upstairs, any sisters coming down, you ushers, just point them out so the brothers can get up and give them their seat. So they can be seated right away, please. Now, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, and to all of my viewers, I had my brother <clears throat> print these out, and once it's time, I'll line them up in the front. But I had my brothers do this because I love to demonstrate what the world been saying. And one of the things about television, I can show you what the devil been talking about. First of all, viewers, if you are in a religion, in the church, have a pastor, 
minister, whatever you call him. And if he teach there's more than one God, he's a heathen. Not only he's a heathen, but he's a liar. <laughs> now, let us understand something. Satan was put out of heaven by God. And as a result of being cast out, he's been angry with the Lord ever since. Let us understand that this anger, his objective is to get even with God. Pay God back. I want to say to my two brothers that are seated in the front, I'm going to ask you brothers to take your chairs and go to the side. Take your chairs with you. Let's go to the side and get out the way because I need to utilize this whole front when it's time. Satan's objective is to get even with God. Now, to get even with God, he have a mission. Belittle him. Try to diminish his greatness to cause people not to believe that God is what he say he is. The best way that Satan can do this <clears throat> is to start religions. Get people who say they love God. Get so-called preachers who profess to know God, but in works, deny him. Now to my viewers that are watching, the doctrine of Trinitarian belief never at no time did any Bible prophet, did any Bible apostle describe God as three persons working together in unity? Let me say it again. Nowhere in the Bible where any messenger of God called God three persons working together in unity. All of the prophets in the Old Testament recognize God as one. Jesus who was the manifestation of God in flesh, even that flesh recognized the spirit as one. The apostles who were sent out after his resurrection recognized God as one. None of them used the language to describe God the way religion do today. <clears throat> the Trinitarian theory that God is the first person and Jesus is the second person in the Godhead and the Holy Ghost is the third person in the Godhead did not come from Jerusalem where the church started. It came from Rome, Italy. Amongst those who was not divinely inspired of God, so therefore when they were not inspired of God, they had to seek for answers. Couldn't understand how God can be in heaven and be 
in the river of Jordan. And then the Holy Ghost come in a bodily shape of a dove. Couldn't understand how Jesus can be on earth and say, Father. They couldn't quite figure that out. Now you have the Jehovah Witnesses who don't know who Jehovah is been peddling a two-God religion for many, 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 many years. Jehovah Witnesses teach that Jehovah is a God and Jesus is a God a God. Two of them. So all down through history, Satan has sent men <clears throat> to try to diminish God's greatness. To try to belittle God's authority. Try to belittle God's power. Now, I want to show you what kind of messengers. Viewers, I want you to listen good and look at the church you're in and look at your apostle, your elder, your bishop, your prophet or pastor or evangelist and see is he a messenger of Baal or a messenger of God. All satanic Men will preach there's more than one God. A true representative of God will never preach there's more than one God. And a true messenger will never try to call or pray to more than one God. First, let's lay the foundation in the book of Kings. First and first Kings chapter 18. I want everybody to take, I want to take my time and I want you to follow me. All Trinitarians in the world, I don't care what color you are. All Trinitarians in the world. You can bring me the Hebrew expression Elohim. We're going to deal with that. Let us begin in the book of Kings. Follow me. First Kings chapter 18, and we're starting at verse 19. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal, 450. Now, the prophets of who? Yeah. Prophets of Baal. The prophets of Baal is the prophets of Satan. A prophet is a messenger. Satan have messengers. God have messengers. Follow me. Give chapter and verse again. We're at 1 Kings chapter 18 and at verse 19. Now therefore sin and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel. Uh -huh. And the prophets of Baal 450. Yes. And the prophets of the groves 400. Wait a minute. Huh. That's a total of 850. That's right. Most people didn't see the prophets of the groves. Prophets of the groves. The prophets of imagery. Yeah. They always focus on the prophets of Baal. Right. Baal prophets was how many? 450. 450. It was two sets. Yeah. Two sets. And the prophets of Baal, 450. It was two sets of unbelievers. Most just looked at Baal prophets. No. They're not looking at those that wish up the grove or the image or the idols. And the prophets of the groves, the 400. The prophets of the groves was 400. Which eat at Jezebel's table. They ate at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. Yes. And Elijah came unto all the people. Elijah, one man. <laughs> Glory to God. One believer. One representative. 
Baal had 450 representatives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The idler, the idol had 400 representatives. That's right. But the ones that worshiped the idol was also Baal worshippers. That's right. Because when you worship any other god other than the god of heaven, you are Baal worshippers. That's right. A total of 850 false prophets. 850 representatives of Satan against one representative of God. Listen. And, and Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? Listen, viewers. Glory to God. How long halt ye? Are you undecided? Between two opinions. Why can't you make up your mind? That's right. What is it, son? If the Lord be God. That's the doctrine of the truth of God. That's right. If the Lord be, be God. Follow him. <clears throat> if the Lord be God. Follow him. Follow him. 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 He's giving you a choice. That's right. If the Lord be God, follow him. All right. But if Baal. If Baal. Then follow him. Then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Now, he gave them the opportunity to choose. So Baal prophets come together and construct an altar and begin to call on Baal. That's right. But Elijah addressed them. That's right. Listen. In the book of 1 Kings 18, read verse 23. Follow me. Let them therefore give us two bullocks. Let's give two, two bullocks. And let them choose one bullock for choose themselves. Choose one for themselves. And cut it in pieces. Cut it up. And lay it on wood and put no mm -hmm. fire under and I will dress the other bullock and lay it on wood and put no fire under. I want to show you the two, one group versus one man. I want you to pay attention to the language of the Bible. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who the false prophets was told to call on. That's right. And who did the prophet of God say he will call on. That's right. Listen good. First Kings chapter 18, right verse 24. All right. And call ye on the name of your gods. Elijah talking to the servants of Baal. That's right. Call ye on the name. On the name. Of your gods. You see, if you have God's viewers, you are one of Baal followers. That's right. If your preacher is teaching you there's more than one God, you have a representative of Baal. Do you see what I'm telling you? If your preacher preached two gods, three gods, four gods, five gods, it doesn't matter of the number. If that number exceeds the number one. That's right. If that number exceeds the number one. Then you have a messenger of Baal. So I'm, by God's permission, saying to the world like the prophet said then. And call ye on the name of your gods. Call on the name of your gods. And I. And I. Will call on the name. Will call on the name. Of the Lord. Of the Lord. The Lord. And the God. And the God that answereth by that fire. Answer by fire. Let him. Let them. Let him. Let them. Let him. Let him be God. Be God. That's right. Now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen good, viewers. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Brothers, line these up across the front. I want to demonstrate this and show you the religious. Some of you brothers, help them, please. 
Bring that one to the far right. I want to make sure you got them in the order that I want. Pay attention. Just, just a minute. Just a minute. Put that on the end where Brother Rick is. Rick, you put that right here. Leave that right there. Back it up. Bring the dove. Come on. Bring that. Move that over. Center it. Bring that over here. Slide this back. And put that here. Bring, right there. The center right there. Move them in close. Move them in close. Right there. Good. Want to fall back some? All right. Fall on back. Glory to God. All right. I'm sorry my brothers in the pulpit can't see this, but I catch you on the rebound. Now, viewers, propaganda. The teaching of the Trinity start with the Catholic Church. And they were so determined to sell this propaganda, artwork was a major factor to converting the ignorant into the belief of a lie. According to the Catholic Church, you see this old man with the beard? That's supposed to be God. You can go into any cathedral of the Catholic Church. Paintings on the ceiling, paintings on the wall, paintings uh, inside of the glass. Satan was so determined to sell this lie, he put these image of pictures in your Bibles. Did it up? He put it in your Bibles to sell a Trinitarian lie. This old man is supposed to be the father, God. This little pudgy baby is supposed to be the son, Jesus. And that's supposed to be Mary. This bird, this dove, supposed to be the representation of the Holy Ghost. And the reason why they use a dove, because the Bible said the Holy Ghost came in a bodily shape of a dove, dealing with Jonathan River Jordan, and lighted upon him. So, uh, Brother L, don't sit in the aisle. Brother Lamar, don't sit in the aisle. Get out the aisle, brother. Don't sit in the aisle at all. Now, this propaganda, and people will actually look at it and say, this is God. This is Jesus, and this is the Holy Ghost. Now, here is a picture that's supposed to be the Trinity all together. This is supposed to be God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. And they say these three are one. Are you listening? This is on your stained windows. Yes. Many have this in their home. Yes. You have it on your job. Religious propaganda is not something that's only preached. But to sell this foolishness for years, artwork played a major role because most people believe what they see. Why did the Trinitarian teacher become so successful? When a lie been told for years, 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 you have a tendency to believe it's the truth. A lie is more effective when you're talking to the masses of ignorant folk. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? When the people are not scripturally educated, when the people have no knowledge of scripture, they will look at pictures.
pictures and images, kiss them. Do the sign of the cross to them. When they're in trouble, they turn to the picture. Father, help me. Now, God said in Exodus. Exodus chapter 20. And we're starting in verse 1. Listen. And God spake all these words. God said. I am the Lord. God speak. Right. Now, this is not God. No. I want you to hear. Hear. Yeah. I'm so glad to be able to demonstrate this because this campus used to be the campus of a Catholic church. And we tore down all the idols. And we had a good time doing it. It was tearing up idols, throwing them in trash, throwing them in dumpsters. Here we are. The Bible says, And God spake and all God these words. Speak. This is not God. So then, if this is not God, who is it? Who is that fella? Because the Bible don't describe God to look like this. Who is this little baby? Naked. Because the Bible don't describe Jesus looking like this. The Bible never said the Holy Ghost is a dove. Did you hear what I said? I said the Bible never said the Holy Ghost is a dove. No. The Bible told us what happened down there in Jordan. In the book of Matthew, chapter what? 3. And Come at, on, son. Matthew 3 and at verse 13. That's what? Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to yes. be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I need to be baptized of thee. I need to be baptized of thee. And comest thou to me. What happened? And Jesus, when he was baptized, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. Then what? And lo, the heavens were opened the unto him. The heavens were opened. And he saw the Spirit of God. He saw the Spirit of God descending, descending like a dove. Like a dove. It didn't say it was a dove. That's right. Like a dove. He descended like a dove. And lighting upon him. Like a dove. Like. The Holy Ghost descended like a dove. Like. The Bible didn't say the Holy Ghost is a dove. Right. Why did not the Bible say the Holy Ghost is a dove? Because a dove is a creature and the Bible said God made every creature after its own kind. That's and right. a dove is created but the Holy Ghost is not created because the Holy Ghost is God. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. Religious propaganda. All right, you Trinitarians. You said these three are one. You said this is God the Father and this is God the Son and you call this bird God number three. Right. Now, all right, let's put them back over there. Come on, let's put them back over there. It's time to do some biblical surgery. I want to take my time and soak you a little. Let's put them over there on the, in the corner. Just, they be there, all right. Let's put them in the corner. All right? Now, there is nowhere in the Bible right. where God is addressed as Trinity. Whenever God want us to know who he is, he told us plain. Plain. That's right. He said, I am. And when he talked to Abraham, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thine perfect. 
he talks to Moses. Moses asks, who shall I say send me? I am that I am. Not even God addressed himself as being a person. That's right. God is a spirit. Now, I first want to debunk the label that you put on God as being a person because when you read the scripture, a person always point to human. God is a spirit. Give chapter verse. In St. John chapter and 4. And then let's get Hebrews chapter 1. Right. And verse 3. Right. I want to take my time and just, you know, old country folk will sit on a porch and get that stick. It start out thick. But he'll whittle it down. We want to break the scriptures down. That's right. I want Hebrews 1, 3. Mm -hmm. Then I want Matthew 28, 19. Right. Then I want fifth chapter of first epistle of John. Mm -hmm. These are the scriptures that the Trinitarians use. That's right. And then I want Genesis 1, 26. That's right. I want you to follow me. First in St. John chapter 4 and at verse 24. All right. God is a spirit. No, God is a person. God is a spirit. Somebody's lying and it ain't God. That's right. God is a spirit and... And they that worship him... They that... Wait, 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 wait. Now, viewers <clears throat> that are Trinitarians, if there are three persons in the Godhead, which one should we wish up? That's right. That's right. Which one That's right. should we wish up? Ye worship, ye know not what. Do you hear what Jesus said? In St. John chapter 4 and at verse 22. Ye worship, ye, ye worship, know not what. You don't know what you're doing. We know what we worship. We know what we worship for. Salvation is of the Jews. Why? But the hour cometh and now is. When what? When the true worshipers. What should the true worshipers do? Shall worship the Father. Shall worship who? The Father. Shall worship who? The Father. How? In spirit. What else? And in truth. Who wants it? For the Father seeketh such to worship him. What is God? God is a spirit. How do he want to be worshipped? And they that worship him. Worship them. Him. Them. Him. How? Must worship him. Must worship singular. Him. Him in spirit, in spirit, and in truth. That's right. Must. He said, must do. Must. must. Now, before you get to other scriptures, <laughs> Jesus was on the mountain of transfiguration. Right. He saw that man would try to recognize three. Glory to God. The Lord knew that men would try to recognize and honor three. That's right. So he left a perfect example here. In the book of St. Matthew chapter 17. I, I want you that worshiping and looking at three persons. Three persons. Now, I'm going to show you in the Bible where your spirit is. And how the Holy Ghost correct those who want to recognize three. That's right. Listen. In the book of St. Matthew, chapter 17, we'll start at verse 1. All right. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother. Yes. And bringeth them up into a high mountain apart. Uh -huh. And was transfigured before them. Yeah, and transfigured. His, uh, the power of God put him in the spirit. Yeah. That's right. Uh -huh. And his face did shine as the sun. My God, man, uh, the, uh, the eternal Holy Ghost got a hold of Jesus. And Jesus was put in the spirit by the power of the spirit. And he illuminated. He was shining. And his face did Glistening. shine as the sun. His face was shining like the sun. And his raiment was white. His raiment was bright as the light. Glory to God as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Wait. Moses. And Elias. And Elias. Talking with him. Hold it right there. Moses was already dead. And the Lord buried him. Prophet Elias was already translated that he should not see death. Jesus 
had not died yet. Moses, Elijah, Elijah. Jesus. Now, Moses and Elijah that appeared was the spirit of the person. The person Moses wasn't there. And the person Elijah wasn't there, but the spirit of the person was there. That's right. The only person that was there was Jesus, Jesus. who was in the spirit. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. Let me say it again. Right. Moses was already dead and the Lord buried him. Elijah was already translated. So the physical body wasn't there. Because Moses was dead, but the spirit of Moses and the spirit of Elijah was there, and the only person of flesh that was there was the Messiah, Christ Jesus, the Son of the living God. Are you listening? Listen. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Yeah. Then answered Peter. Uh-oh. Then answered Peter. And said unto Jesus, what? Lord, it is good for us to be here. Lord, we're, we're, we're glad to be here, Lord. If thou wilt. If it be your will. Let us make here three tabernacles. Hallelujah. Let us make how many? Three tabernacles. Let us recognize three. Three. Even at one point, the apostles... Wanted to recognize three. three. Honor three. That's right. Glory to God. I hope you can give this. If thou wilt. What was this written for? Our learning. That's right. God allowed this to happen. That's right. So he can correct man. Yeah. And redirect man's thinking. Yeah. He wanted to redirect man's thinking. That's right. So here you have the apostles. That's right. Want to recognize three. three. They knew Moses was great. They knew Elijah was great. And they knew the teacher, the master teacher, he was the greatest of them all. Listen. Let us make here three tabernacles. One for thee. One for you. And one for Moses. One for Moses. And one for Elias. And one for Elijah. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed him. Wow. He was putting this out. <laughs> That's right. Glory to God. A bright cloud Glory overshadowed them. God overshadowed them. And behold, a voice, a voice out of the cloud spoke from the cloud. Which said, this, this is my beloved son. This is the one. This is my beloved son. This is the one. In whom I am well pleased. I want you to look at this one. Hear ye him. Hear ye them. Hear ye him. Hear ye them. Hear ye him. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, when the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were sore afraid. And they were so afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. Don't be afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, what did they see? They saw no man. They saw no man. Save Jesus only. We should only worship the Christ alone. That's right. That's right. That's right. Only one. Jesus only. So even the Holy Ghost, the everlasting God, got rid of that kernel yeah. concept. That's right. He denounced it. That's right. He spoke against it. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. The power of God spoke from heaven. That's right. The manifestation of Elohim was made. That's right voice. Elohim spoke. Elohim was standing up in that body and Elohim illuminated the body of the Son of Man. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. And pointed everything Jesus only. To Jesus. Jesus only. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. What shall we do? Hear ye him. And when they looked up they saw no man saying. Save Jesus only. Jesus only. Jesus only. Hey Amen. That's, that's what we are. We're Jesus only. That's right. Huh? That's right. We're Jesus only. That's right. Now, Matthew 28, 19. Mm -hmm. And then first epistle of John, chapter 5. That's right. Viewers, again, I said, when I was in Johannesburg, South Africa last month, 
God gave us a mighty victory. In two days, we baptized 192 souls. In the name of Jesus Christ, so many men and women came to me and said they believed in three gods all their life until they saw the truth of God's message. Now they know that it's one and Jesus Christ is he. Viewers, you've been told there are three persons right. in the Godhead right. you've been lied to. We're going to itemize this, and I'm going to show you why you've been lied to. That's right. All right. Matthew chapter 28 and at verse 19. Listen. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Yes. Baptizing them in the name of the Father uh -huh. and of the Son uh -huh. and of the Holy Ghost. You said that's the Trinity. Yeah. And you said that's three persons. Right. Look how you lied. Listen to what the Bible says. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father. Who? In the name of the Father. Let's find out who is the Father. Give me Malachi. Malachi chapter 2. And at verse 10. I want to take it section by section. That's right. Piece by piece. Yes. Malachi chapter 2 and verse 10. Have we not all one Father? Have we not all... Three persons that make up one father. Hath we not all one father? Hath we not all three persons that make up one father? Hath we not all one father? The Bible is talking here. Have we not all, all the, the prophets are testifying here. Right. And you bear in mind the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. That's right. Hath we not all one father? Hath not one God. What? Hath not one God created us. Wait a minute. How many made us? One God created us. Now you Trinitarians, you quote Genesis 1.26. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And you said God was talking to his son Jesus and talking to the third person, the Holy Ghost. And all three collaborated together to make Adam. That's right. That's right. Because being scripturally illiterate. You thought us would mean more than one God. That's right. But he just read how many made us. Have we not all one father? That include Adam. That's right. All Amen. one you father. You better tell me Adam had more than one father. That's right. I was talking to a fella uh, out of Chicago who supposedly came to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. He called me up and said he wanted to debate me hey, on, on Jesus Christ being God. I said, don't do it. I said, don't do it. Watch the tele, I said, watch the telecast some more. He said, but I know the Bible. I said, I'm very happy for you, but don't come. Don't come and do it. I told him, don't do this to yourself. He went as far as telling me there's two fathers. Lord. He said, God is a father. Jesus is a father. I said, how many saviors we got? He said, we got two saviors. Jesus is a savior and God is a savior. I said, all right, then uh, who is Christ? He said, Christ is the last name of Jesus. This is what happened when you get bad revelation. Bad revelation accompanied with bad teaching. The Bible speaks plain. Have we not all one father? One. Hath not one, one God? One. One. Oh, we take God away. In these last days, we got to make this one strong. Even David got one stone. One. He may have gathered more than one, but to do the job, he got one. One smooth stone loaded in the sling. Why would the stone smooth? Because the one stone represent one God. Being a smooth stone means the stone had no flaws, showing you that the one God is flawless. And in the midst of him being flawless, that one God has the power to bring down the head of everything. Are you listening? Now, you said the Father is the first person in the Godhead. And this is your scripture that you use, Hebrews 1 and 3. Hebrews chapter 1 and at verse 3. Follow me, I want to soak you a little. We want to take our time and educate you three-person folk. That's right. Uh-huh. You three-person folk. You, 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 you preach it. 
You sang it. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty. God in three persons. Blessed Trinity. You know when the choir was singing last night and it sounded good. And then when they got to that part. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty. Oh, they changed the words totally. They, got, they had to throw that lie out. I remember my son came to me. He said, we, we got to change that. I said, well, when you change it, I don't even want it to sound like the word Trinity. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and when, they, when they change it, it came out all right. All right. Let you know that God is our Savior. That's right. Yeah. That's right. All right. I want you Trinitarian fakers to get this. Yes, I'm talking to your pastor. I'm talking to your priest. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to your pope. I'm talking to all of you that been sold on the Trinitary lie. That's right. Listen. Hebrews chapter 1 and at verse 3. Follow me. Who being the brightness of his glory. Now, begin at verse 1. At verse 1. God in sun dry times. And in divers manners speaking time past unto Hold the it. fathers. God in sun dry times. And in divers manners. Many manners. Many ways. Did what? Spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophet. And hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son. Now, spoken to us by his son. Spoken to us by Jesus Christ. That's right. Uh -huh. Whom he hath appointed heir of all things. Now, he appointed Jesus to be heir of all things. Holy. He inherited God's name. He inherited God's authority. He inherited God's power. Until the Son of Man declared all things the Father have are mine. He inherited God's name. He obtained a more excellent name than the angels. The Bible said all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. He, in Hallelujah. he inherited. He inherited his power when he lay hands on you. Eyes come open. He inherited his power. He walked on water. He inherited his power. The eyes of the blind came open. Do you hear what he said? Whom he hath appointed heir of whom all he things. Whom he hath appointed heir of everything. By whom also he made the world. By whom also he made the world. Who being the brightness of his glory. Still talking about the son of man. The son of man was the brightness. Of his glory. Of God's glory. He was the clear manifestation of God. He was the express image of God. Right. Listen. Who being the brightness of his glory. The brightness of his glory. And the express image the of. The express image. Of his person. Now you out of ignorance said that meant God was the person. It was not. No. The son of God was the express image. And this is the word you overlook. His. His. His person. His person. Now the question is who is God's person? That's right. Who is God's person? That's it. His, his person. His person. There's a person that's being owned. That's right. his, his person. Mean the person belong to God. That's right. Give me John. St. John chapter 3. 316. And God verse 16, so loved the world. That he gave his. That he gave his only begotten son. His what? His only begotten son. His son was his person. Person. His person. His person was his sacrifice. That's right. His sacrifice was his son. That's right. His son was his offering. That's right. His offering was the mediator. The mediator was that body. That body was the Lamb of God. God, the everlasting Father, was in the person That's right. God came in the person of Christ Jesus That's right. God was not the person the son of God was the person God was in the person and the Holy Ghost filled the person That's right. hallelujah. hallelujah the Bible says Jesus of Nazareth right. was filled the with the Holy Ghost. the Holy Ghost. Now you Trinitarians says that the Holy Ghost is the third person. Liar! Go back to Matthew 28, 19. Back to Matthew chapter 28, 19. 
Go Matthew 28, 19 says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Teach. Teach. All nations. Baptize them. Baptizing them in the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Ghost. And of the Holy Ghost. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. You say that's three persons. What you fail to realize, Father and Holy Ghost are the same. Let's look at the compound word. Holy Ghost. A compound word. Two words. Holy is the characteristics of God. Ghost, which is spirit, is the nature of God. So, if Jesus of Nazareth was filled with the Holy Ghost, you're going to tell me he was filled with the person? The Bible says in the second chapter of Acts, and on the day of Pentecost, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, there was all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from suddenly heaven. Suddenly there came a sound. No, there came a person from heaven. There came a sound from heaven. No, a person from heaven. A sound from heaven. As a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues, tongues like, as, like a fire. as a fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they was all filled with the person. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They was all filled with the Holy Person. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They was all filled with the Holy Person. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. There is nowhere. Nowhere. Hallelujah. In the history of the Bible. Where the Holy Ghost is called person. a person. A person. No way. It was the Holy Ghost that moved upon the face of the deep. That's right. Not a person. That's right. The prophets was filled and was dealt with and moved upon by the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Not moved by a person. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. So, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Three titles. But only one out of the three titles is a person. The one that's the person is son. The son is called man child. The son have a mother. The son come through 42 generations. The son is the offspring of David. The son come out the tribe of Judah. The son come from the generations of Shem. The son was the only begotten of the father. The son was not begotten by another person. Are you listening? That's right. You added three persons. That's right. The Bible ain't never said three persons, three persons. in the Godhead. You no. added that line. That's right. First epistle of John. First epistle of John, chapter 5. Chapter 5. And we're at verse 7. Verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven. No, there are three persons in heaven. There are three that bear record in heaven. We're going to strip this apart, sentence by sentence. Right. Precept upon precept. That's right. Each sentence is a line. Yeah. So we got to strip it line upon line. Yeah. Line upon line. Yeah. Here a little and there a little. That's right. All right, listen. For there are three that bear record in heaven. Hold it. Three. The term record means record. something's recorded. The term record. There's a record in heaven. Record. There's something recorded in heaven. That's right. Listen. For there are three that bear record in heaven. It didn't say there's three persons there. Three that bear record. It says record. there's three that bear record. There's a record. There's something recorded. Recorded. It didn't say it's three persons. Bear record there's in heaven. something recorded that's bear record. That's right. What is it? The Father. That's God. The Father is God. The Father. What else? The Word. Hold it. The word, that's God. that's God. Let's deal with the word. St. John chapter 1, we're starting at verse 1. Listen, now, you says, when you see the word, you say that's talking about the flesh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what it said? That's talking about flesh and blood. Right. The word is the action of God. 
the word is the speech of God. For Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. God make everything come to being by the spoken power of his word. He speaks that which did not exist into existence. Listen. St. John chapter 1, we're at verse 1. In the beginning was the word. In the beginning was God. That's right. That's right. That's right. And the beginning began with the speech of God. That's right. Are you listening? God used words to introduce time. God used words to introduce light. God used words to separate, separate light from darkness. God used words to make the sun, make the moon, make the stars, make man, make the fowls of the air, the beasts of the field, the fish in the water, and the hosts of heaven. That's right. He used words. That's right. All right. In the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. The word was with God. It doesn't mean there's a little God with the big God. No. Word was with God. With God. And the word was God. He's telling you there's none with him. That's right. If the word was with God and the same thing that was with him is him. That's right. He didn't say it was another one with him. Mm -mm. Now let's balance out the word was with him, with him to debunk somebody else being with him. In Deuteronomy chapter 32 and at I, verse 39. I want to focus on the language of the Bible. Every chess move that the Trinitarians try to make, I'm going to checkmate you. <laughs> That's right. Huh? That's right. I'm going to checkmate you. That's right. Hey Amen. We got all kings on the board. That's right. Glory to God. Got all kings on the board. That's right. All right. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 39. You that say the word was with God mean there was another God with him. You's a lie out of hell. Amen. You remember, when you explain scripture, you can't have scripture contradict scripture right. or overlapping scripture. You got to have scripture harmonizing with scripture. That's right. Uh -huh. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 39. That's what? See now that I. God talking. See now that I, even I am he. And there is no God with me. But the word is with him. And the word was with God. But what's with him? And there was no God with me. But the word is with him. And the word was with God. But what's with him? And there is no God with me. So that can't mean that there was a little God with a big God. No. no. Not at all. There is no God with me. There is no God with me. With what me. do this one God do in Deuteronomy? I kill. I, How many? I, I, I kill. kill. I kill. And I make I. alive. If you want to live, yeah. I'll make you live. Yeah. I wound. I. If you want pain, I, I can do that too. Yeah. And I heal. If you want deliverance from the pain that I put on you, I can do that too. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Everything points to singular. That's right. Three that bear record in heaven. Father. That's God. God the, is the Father. First Father is the originator of all things. The Word. Word. That's God. Now because God brings things that did not exist into being by the spoken power of his word. And then at the appointed time the word was made flesh. Let's explain that. Yeah. Let's explain that term. Yes. In St. John 1.14. St. John 1.14. was made flesh. And the word was made flesh. Now. The Bible already established God is the word. Yeah. the word. But God is not made. No. That's right. God always was. Always. But yet the Bible said the word was, was made, made flesh. flesh. That don't mean God was made flesh. That's right. That means flesh was made by the creating power of his spoken word. That's right. When did God use word to make Flesh. flesh. He put his word in the prophets. That's right. His spoken word came from heaven and got in the mouths of the prophets and they spoke about the coming of the flesh that God would manifest himself in. That's right. That's right. On us, child is born. Son is given. Government shall be upon his shoulder. Name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. 
The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come. And unto him, not unto them, right. <clears throat> but unto him shall the gathering of the people be, binding his fold to the vine, and his ass's coat to the choice vine. He washed his garment in wine, and his clothes in the blood of grapes. Bible always talking about one. Are you listening? And the word was made flesh. And what did it do? And dwelt among us. That flesh that the word made dwelt among the human family. Right. And the flesh that the word made was the son of God, Christ Jesus. That's right. And God, the power of the word, was in that flesh. That's right. That's why Paul said, without controversy, in other words, stop arguing. Stop arguing. Ain't no use talking. That's right. God was manifested. When a thing is manifested, seen, heard. You can hear the sound of it. God was manifested in the flesh, meaning he worked in it. The flesh was a veil. Huh? That's what the Bible said. His flesh was a veil. Hebrews chapter 10. Says what? And at verse 20. All right. By a new and living way. By a new. He, he had a new way for man to live. That's right. He wanted man to get rid of the old man. So he, by a new and living way, which he has consecrated which he for has us, consecrated for us, for us, through the veil, through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. His veil is what? His flesh. You hide under a veil. That's right. I say you hide. Under a veil. Isaiah chapter 45 and Isaiah verse 15. 45, 15 says, that verily, verily, thou art a God. Thou art a God. That hidest thyself. That hides Hallelujah. thyself. O oh God of Israel, the Savior. He hid himself. That's right. In a veil. In a veil. In flesh. That's right. In a body. Yeah. In the son. Yeah. In the man. Yeah. In the son of David. That's right. He hid himself. That's right. You couldn't see God. No. Someone said, well, wait a minute, Pastor Janus. What do you mean you couldn't see God? Jesus said, if you see me, you see the Father. See the Father. Yeah. One preacher said, when he quote the scripture, when you see me, you see the Father. He said, when you looked at Jesus, it shows you the way the Father looked. No, it don't. No. Philip said unto him, Lord. No, it don't. Jesus was a Jew. That's right. The father is of no nationality. That's right. Jesus had a bloodline. The spirit have no relatives. That's right. Jesus had a certain height. The father said, I'm higher than heaven. Deeper than hell. Broader than the sea. And longer than the earth. Jesus of Nazareth, that sacrifice had to grow from a baby to a man. The nature that was God was the spirit in that body, and God don't grow. That's right. That's right. There are three that bear record. For there are three that bear record in, in heaven. heaven. The Father. That's God. The Word. That's God. And the Holy Ghost. That's God. And these three are one. Wait a minute. These three are three persons that work in one. And these three are one. Now, let's look at the different operations. Right. These three. Three. Three operations. Father, Word, Holy Ghost. Father, Creator. Word, Speech. Holy Ghost, comforter, keeper, protector. Right. Now, the Apostle Paul itemized the operation of God. That's right. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I want you to follow me. This is the expression of the Hebrew term Elohim. Right. Elohim talks about God, but Elohim means plural. That's right. And every Trinitarian always run under the, to the word Elohim. That's right. Elohim mean plural. Elohim. That's right. Elohim mean plural. That's right. That's right. Elohim does mean plural. But now I have to go to the Bible and show us how God 
is plural right. and how he functioned in a plurality manner right. and yet still is one. That's true. Follow me. In the book of First Follow Corinthians. Me. Follow me. Follow me. First Corinthians chapter 12 and we're at verse 6. I first want to work on the operations of God. Right. Listen. First Corinthians 12 and we're at verse 6. All right. And there are diversities of, of, of operations. There are diversities. <coughs> of operations. Many functions. Mm -hmm. Many operations. But. But it is the same God. No, it's not. It is the same God. No, it's not. It is the same God. No, it, no, it's three persons. It is the same God. It's three persons working together. It is the same God which works. Many operations, but it's the same God. Which how, how much work he do? Which worketh all. He, he work all. In all. In all. That's right. Many operations. Diversities. Elohim. Many functions that's right many ways of doing things that's right that's right mm, mm, mm. he's a healer he's a keeper he's a redeemer he's a provider he's a teacher right he's a preacher he is the anointing that's right he is the comforter that's right Diversity. Diversities. Diversities. Of operations. Of operations. Diversity of functions. Now, Trinitarians, if you would have said Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are three functions, yeah. you would have been right. If you would have said Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are three operations, you would have been right. right. If you would have said Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are three titles, you would have been right. Yeah. But because the devil stood up in you so boldly, Told a bold-faced lie. Yeah. And said, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is three persons. Yeah. You lied. You lied. That's right. You blatantly lied. And there are diversities of operations. Diversity. Diversities. Of operation. But it is the same God. Here it is the same God. Which have, it, have it raining in one place. Same time, snowing in another place. Same time. A whirlwind right. in another place. Yeah. Same time, earthquake yeah. in another place. Same time, peace yeah. in another place. Right. All these operations. It is the same God. Same God. Which worketh. Same God. Same, same, same God. God. Yeah. Wonderful. Manifest himself in the body of Christ Jesus, the Son of God. And still in heaven. That's right. And talk from heaven. That's right. Operating. Operations. That's right. Letting you know there is no limitations to God. That's right. Diversities of operations. Diversities. Diversities of operations. Diversity. Many. Many. Many funny. Di different functions. Mm. Different functions. Functions, yeah. right. but by who? But it is the same God. Same G O D S. Same G O D. Elias. That's right. Elias. Same G O D. Which, same one. Which worketh all in all. He worked where? All in all. He worked where? But which worketh all in all. He said, "I'm the same yesterday." Same. Same. What were you yesterday, Lord? I turned Aaron Rod, made it bud. Yeah. bud. Turned into a serpent to eat all other serpents. Yeah. By day, I got in the cloud to lead Israel. Yeah. By night, pillar of fire. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I stood up in Moses. Yeah. And Moses was like a god unto Pharaoh. <laughs> That's right. All type of diverse things. That's right. Amen. I separated the water for my people. Yeah. 
Huh? That's right. Hallelujah, glory. Diversities of operation. Diversity of operation. I stood before Job as a whirlwind and I questioned him. Where were you? Right. When I laid the foundations of the earth, that's right. I hung the earth on nothing. I spread abroad the north over an empty place. That's right. I laid the chambers in the water and gave the sea her decree. That's right. Many operations. Diversity. As the prophet saw me, I was walking on the wings of the wind. Go ahead. And I spread the curses of heaven. Diversities and of operations. Diversity hallelujah. of operations. Of operations. But it is the same God. Who is it? The same God. Who is it? The same God. Same God. Who is it that made the heavens? Same God. Who is it that made the earth? Same God. Who is it that made the moon? Same God. Who is it that made Adam? Same God. Who is it that stood in the Son of God? Same God. Who is it that started the church of the Same God. Same God. Same God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Same God. Same God which worketh all in all. Who is it that said I suffer not a woman to preach, nor not to teach, nor the use of authority over the man with being silent? Same God. Who is it that said through Peter, repent and be baptized every one in the name of Jesus Christ? Same God. Who is it that started the church on the day of Pentecost? Same God. Who is it that said these signs shall follow them that believe? Same God. Hallelujah. 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 Diversities of operations. Pastor. Hallelujah. You understand? Hallelujah. Diversities of operations. Who is it that said first in the church apostles? Same God. Second daily prophets? Same God. Daily teachers? Same God. Pastors? Same God. Help? Same God. Evangelists? Same God. Miracles? Same God. Hallelujah. 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 It's not God is all-powerful, all-knowing. He don't need no help. In fact, the Bible said when I looked, there was none to help. When I wanted, there was none to uphold. But with my own arm, I brought salvation. Same God. Not another. Hallelujah, same God. Hallelujah. The God of Abraham. Same God. Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am. I am. I am. He told Moses, I am that I am. That I am. Who was that? Same God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Are you listening? And there are diversities of operations. Many. Hallelujah. Many operations. So, Elohim, plural, yes. But God, singular. That's right. Diverse works, many works by same God. Same now, God. another function of Elohim where it's pluralized is his shape. That's right. His form. That's right. His fashion. In the book of Hosea. Give me the book of Hosea. Chapter 12. Focus closely on the language of the Bible. Hosea chapter 12 and we're at verse 10. Hosea 12 and 10. I have also spoken by the prophets. I also spoken by the prophets. And I have multiplied visions. Hold it. I multiplied. I didn't give you one vision. No. I had to give you a whole lot for me to show you about me. That's right. And, and use similitudes. Spell it. S I M I L I T U D E S. Similitudes. Wait a minute. Similitudes? Similitudes. There are similitudes, plural, yes. and there are similitudes, singular. That's right. Let me show you similitudes, singular. Fifth chapter, book of Romans. That's right. I want to show you the difference between each word. One is pluralized and one is not. Fifth chapter, book of Romans. 
Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. Even over them that had not sinned. Give chapter and verse. In Romans chapter 5 and we're at verse 14. All right. Nevertheless. Nevertheless. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God the less. Death reigned from Adam to Moses. Death reigned from Adam to Moses. Even over them that had not sinned. What? After the similitude. Spell it. S-I-M-I-L-I-T-U-D-E. One image. One image. One form. After the similitude of Adam transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come? Of him that was to come. Was to so come. Adam was made in the image or in the similitude Dude. of the Son of Man that would come. That's right. But now here you got God showing shapes, shapes, forms. That's right. Fashions. Go back to Hosea, son. Back in Hosea. Are you getting this? Back in Hosea chapter 12 and at verse 10. All right. I have also spoken by the prophets. God say I also spoken by the prophets. And I have multiplied visions. I have multiplied visions. I showed you a lot of things. And you similitudes. I use shapes, by, forms, mm -hmm. fashion. How did I bring it to pass? By the ministry of the prophets. Look at him showing himself to Moses as a burning bush. Burning bush. Huh? That's right. Hey Amen. That's a burning bush. That's right. Look at him describing himself when Jesus, the Son of Man, was walking here on this preaching about the Spirit, call him the husband man. One prophet saw him and said, my little finger shall be thicker than my father's loins. He said, I saw a piece of cloud coming up yeah, as a man's hand. Some of the twos appear as a man's hand writing on the wall. And Daniel's day. That's right. Shapes. That's right. Forms. That's right. Fashion. Mm -hmm. Showed the image of the Son of God standing down there along with the three Hebrew boys, Hebrew boys, and the Son of God wasn't even begotten yet. That's right. Similitudes. That's right. Appeared under Ezekiel yeah. as a beast yeah. with four faces oh, yeah. on each side. Ezekiel said, I saw a whirlwind coming out of the north and a fire enfolding itself. Then I saw four beasts. Yeah. One had the face of a man, one had the face of an ox, one had the face of a lion. One had the face of an eagle. Shapes, Shapes. forms, mm -hmm. similitudes. similitudes. Face of a man will show you how that body will have favor with God and man. Mm -hmm. Face of an ox show you how he will be a sacrifice. Face of a lion show you the power that was in that body. That's right. Face, thank God, of an eagle. The Bible said the eyes of the Lord run to and fro in all the earth. All the earth. I have also spoken by the prophets. I spoken by the prophets. By the prophets, I come to Manoah and his wife. And first they said it was a man. Then they said it was an angel. Then they concluded it was God. That's right. Send the two. I have also spoken I by appeared, the prophets. Thank God, the day that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord in his train filled the temple. Similitudes. That's right. In the days of Moses and Aaron and Abihu and Nadab and the sons of Aaron and the 70 nobles said, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne with the liking of a pain sapphire stone under his feet using similitude. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah, glory. Yeah. I have also Shapes. spoken by the prophets. Psalms. That's right. Fashions. That's right. By the ministry of the prophets. Of the prophets. And I have multiplied visions. I gave them a whole lot of visions. And use similitudes. And use similitudes. And use images. By the shapes ministry. And forms. By the service. Of the prophets. That was rendered by the prophets. That's right. But it That's was right. the same Lord. Same God. Huh? That's right. Same, same Lord. Same. So you that says three persons, you liar. That's a lie. That's a lie. Three functions, yes. Mm -hmm. Three operations, yes. Right. And you can't narrow them down to three operations. No, no, no. Diversities. Uh-uh, no, no, you can't do that. There's many functions. Oh, yeah. To the one true holy God. That's right. You get what I'm telling you. That's right. What did the Holy Ghost say? Back in 1 Corinthians 12. Everybody all right? Yeah. Listen. Back in 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 6. So all of you that being taught the Trinity lied that there are three persons. There is no Bible that said at any time that there are three persons in heaven. No. There is no Bible at no time. No time. If it didn't say it's three, you know that your over witnesses lied when they said it was two. That's right. That's right. If you believe in more than one God, ye are bell servants. That's right. That's right. Go back to the book of Kings. Everybody, all right? Go back to Kings. 
Back in 1 Kings chapter 18. Brother Elijah was dealing with 850 prophets. That's right. 450 servants of Baal, Baal. and 400, 400 of those that wish up the grove. That's right. The images and handmade idols. Right. 850 men. That's right. Up against one man. That's right. Huh? First Kings that 18. That show you how strong God is. That's right. All right. First Kings 18 and we're at verse 21. Now, hold that. Mm -hmm. You that says, mm -hmm. Jehovah Witness, yeah. that is two gods. Yeah. Seven chapter of Acts. Of Acts. That's right. Get that verse 55. Amen. Amen. Because the two God teaching was here before I was born. Yeah. Before I was born. It was, yeah. I got brothers here 70 years old, 80 years old. It was here before they were born. Yeah. It's not a new teaching. It's an old recycled lie. That's right. Amen. The devil set that stuff out on the curve and the devil picked it up and recycled it. <laughs> that's right. Yeah? That's right. And that's what the devil is doing now, recycling and declaring there's two gods. No, it's not. No, it's not. The Bible plainly says here, in fact, Jesus there, one man responds to Jesus, well, master, mm -hmm. thou have said the truth. Said the truth. There is but one God. That's right. And none other. But he. Do you hear this? Now in the book of St. Mark chapter 12. Follow me. We'll start at verse 29. Follow me. Mark chapter 12 and at verse 29. Follow me. And Jesus answered him. Jesus answered him. The first of all the commandments is here, O Israel. The first. The first. And then I want Corinthians. Let us see who is one God toward. That's right. Because I believe to us mm -hmm. it's one God. You know, to right. us. That's right. Hallelujah to God. All right. St. Mark chapter 12, we're at verse 29. Follow me. And Jesus answered him, the first of all and the you commandments. you that saw on internet giving the dumb, a thumbs down, it don't move us. It's still one God. Still one God. It's still one God. Listen, when you give, when, listen, let me give you some knowledge. When you give a thumbs down, God is down there too. The Bible said if I lay my bed in hell, God is there. God is there. So when you put your thumb, when you put your thumb down, I agree with you. God is down there too. That's right. If you go that way, God is right there too. That's right. If you go that way, God is there too. Yeah. Glory to God. That's right. Hallelujah. Can't get away from it. That's right. What did he say? Mark chapter 12 and at verse 29. All right. And Jesus answered him. Jesus answered. The first of all the commandments first is. First of all the commandments is. Hear, O Israel. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God is one the Lord. The Lord our God is two Lords. The Lord our God is one Lord. Two Lords. One Lord. Two Lords. One Lord. We sang it. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. That's right. Tell it everywhere we go. That's right. No matter where, just tell it everywhere. Everywhere. Uh -huh. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. All thine heart. And with all thy soul. Yes. And with all thy mind and with all thy strength. Yes. This is the first commandment. Uh -huh. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Yes. There is none other commandment greater than these. Uh -huh. And the scribe said unto him. What did the scribe say? Well, master. Hallelujah. Well, master, thou hast said the truth. Anything opposite from this, you know it's a lie. Yeah. For there is one God. Wait a minute. Yeah. There is one God. And there is none other but he. What is that statement called? And the scribe said unto him. What is that statement called? Thou hast said the truth. What is that statement called? Thou hast said the truth. And what was the statement? There is, for there is one God, and there is none other but he. And what is that statement called? The truth. And what, what is that statement? For there is one God, and there is none other but he. And what is that statement called? The truth. And what is that statement? For there is one God, and there is none other but he. The truth. Is that the truth, church? Yeah. Come yeah. back to me. How many healers do we have? One. How many One give you the Holy Ghost? One. How many we pray to? One. How many we sing about? One. How many churches did he start? One. How many gods in heaven? One. How many creators? One. How many alphas? One. How many omegas? One. Who's the beginning? One. Who's the ending? One. Who's the first? One. Who's the last? One. Who's the God of Abraham? One. The God of Isaac? One. The God of Jacob? One. The God of Israel? One. one God, 
the God that made the world, the God of creation. One God. How many? One, One God. Let the world hear it. One. Let the world hear it. One. Let the world hear it. One. Hallelujah. One God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> One God. One Lord. One God. One faith. One faith. One baptism. One. One. What did the Bible say? Well, Master, thou hast said the truth. Well, Master. Thou hast said the truth. You told the truth. For there is one God. There is. One God. One God. And there is none other. There is none other. Other, but he, none other, none other. Give me the seventh chapter of Acts. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Acts chapter Hallelujah. seven. Hallelujah to God on high. Acts chapter seven and at verse Acts 55. chapter seven. Begin at verse fifty-five. Acts chapter seven and verse fifty-five. But this is where the Jehovah Witnesses go to mm -hmm. to justify two gods. That's right. That's right. Listen. Acts, Acts 7 and verse 55. Follow me. But he being full of the Holy Ghost. Now, when you have the Holy Ghost, you won't see two. Holy Ghost will never show you anything that contradicts what he said. That's right. I believe it was John talked about having your eyes anointed with eye sacks. That's right. And once the eye sacks, the dropping of the spirit get in your eyes, Go ahead. You, all that three will clear up, oh, yeah. and you will see one all the time. That's right. What is that? But he being full of the Holy Ghost. Full of the Holy Ghost. Looked up steadfastly into heaven. And here you liars can't even see the next room. That's right. You can't even look at, you can't even see the next room, and you see two and three. That's right. Here's a man in the spirit, looked steadfastly into heaven. Into heaven. And? And saw the glory of God. And saw God's glory. And Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Listen at that. Amen. When you're colonel and use logic right away, you will say, you see what right hand is? Right hand. I don't need no revelation to understand that. That's right. The brother's on my right hand. That's right. He's one. Mm -hmm. I'm two. Yeah. That's what they say. Logic. Logic. Now you got to make the Bible harmonize because now you say Jesus is a God standing with a God. Right. And the one God says, there is no, no God, God with, with me. me. With so me. I'm going to believe what he said. Right. Because he ought to know who's with him. That's right. And he ought to know who's not with him. That's right. That's right. Right hand standing on the right, right hand. hand of God did not mean, and it never meant, that Jesus was standing on the right hand of another. Of another, that's right. How can Jesus stand on the right hand of another mm -hmm. if there's only one God, one God and if Jesus is he? Is he. So what do right hand mean? In Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15. And at verse 6. Thy right hand, O Lord. Wait a minute. Glory to God. You got Elohim working again. That's right. Function of God. That's right. Thine right hand, O God. Thy right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in power. It's become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord. Thy right hand, O Lord. Hath dashed in pieces the enemy. Have dashed to pieces the enemy. The enemy. Right hand mean power. Power. Right hand mean majesty. That's right. Right hand mean authority. That's right. Huh? That, but he being full of the Holy he Ghost. Being, hallelujah. Glory to God, full of the Holy Ghost. Looked up steadfastly, looked steadfastly into, heaven, into heaven. And saw the glory of God. And saw the glory of God. And Jesus standing and Jesus on the right hand of God. Standing on the right hand of God. And said, Behold, I see the heavens open. I see the heavens open. And the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. You, you see that? An old fool said, You got the Son of Man standing mm. right next to God. <laughs> right. That's a blind bat. That's right. Huh? See, that's, that's bell prophets. Now, at no time did Stephen say he saw more than one God. No, no, never. And we're going to keep reading and prove it. That's right. Listen. And said, Behold, I see the heavens open, 
And the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then what? Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord. Yes. And cast him out of the city and stoned him. Uh -huh. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet. By whose the name, name of Saul. Saul. Uh -huh. And they stoned Stephen. Forgive chapter and verse. Now in Acts chapter 7, I'm at verse 59. This is after the Holy Ghost made yeah. Stephen or Stephen said, right. I saw Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Right. And then the Holy Ghost went and worked in Stephen and opened up and made it plain to the right. world that will come after this scripture is written so they can know who Stephen was looking at all the time. Acts chapter 7 and verse 59. Says what? And they stoned Stephen. They stoned Stephen. Calling upon God. Calling upon G-O-D-S. Calling upon G-O-D. Calling upon G-O-D. If Jesus was standing next to God like you think this means, right. why wouldn't you call Jesus? <laughs> and they stoned Stephen calling upon God. Why, did, why wouldn't he just call Jesus? And, right. You know, and tell Jesus like William said, I don't want to talk to you. I want to talk to your father. That's right. William right. used to be a plural God man. That's right. Huh? That's right. I mean, even my cameraman, John, he used to be a plural God man. He was a Catholic. That's right. He can identify with them pictures and bring back memories. Huh? <laughs> 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What did he say, son? And they stoned Stephen calling upon God. They stoned Stephen calling upon God. And what did he say? And saying, Lord Jesus. Who did he call on? Lord calling upon God. He called on who? Calling upon God. By what name? Lord Jesus. He called on who? Calling upon God. By what name? Lord Jesus. He called on who? Calling upon God. By what name? Lord Jesus. How many he called on? Call upon God. G-O-D. But wait a minute. God. Jesus was on the right hand right. of God, but how many he called on? Calling upon God, G-O-D. And said what? And saying, Lord Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. When you call on Jesus, you're calling on God. Calling on God. You're calling him by name. That's right. Lord Jesus, you're calling him Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus because that's telling you God is above all other gods and Hallelujah. his name got the saving power. That's right. That's right. That's right. Calling upon God. And Remember, saying, Amen. Baal prophets, Amen. Elijah said, Amen. call Upon, upon your gods. Captain verse. Now in 1 Kings 18 and verse 24. All of you that got two. All of you that got three, four, Hallelujah. five, I'm saying like my brother the prophet. That's right. You call upon your gods. And, and call ye on the name of your gods. You call on the name of your gods. And, and, I, and I will call on the name of the Lord. I believe the eighth chapter of the book of Corinthians yes. and then the fourth chapter of the book of Revelation. Amen. Amen. You got to move because I'm ready to quit and First I'm trying to quit. But thank Sorry. God the thing is just moved. Hallelujah. Huh? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, son. First Corinthians hit. chapter 8 and at verse 6. All right. But to us, to us, there is but one God. But to us, God's people. That's right. To us, to God's people, there is but one God. To us, to us. So don't be amazed when someone preach 2, 3, 4, and 5. I'm going to show you why they do that. But Here, to, I, I'm going to show you why they do that. That's right. To us, there is one God. The Father. The Father. Of whom are all things. Of whom are all things. And we in him. We in him. And one Lord Jesus Christ. And. And, and look at here. And. Let that is. And, and. And one Lord Jesus Christ. One Lord Jesus Christ. By whom are all things. By whom are all things. And we by him. We by him. Hold I, it. Mm -hmm. By the Spirit, we in him. And what else did he say? And we buy him. And by the Son of Man, we buy him. That's right. Now let's break that down. That's right. By the Spirit, we in him. Why? You're baptized by one Spirit, spirit. into one body. That's right. That's right. In him. By the Son, you buy him by because him. when he offered up that body and shed blood, you have to get that blood and water by through him. baptism. You're baptized. By his name. Right. That's right. That's right. We're in him. In him. We're by him. By him. We're from him. That's right. We're through him. Right. We're right. of him. That's right. 
But to us there is but one God. One God. The Father. The Father. Of whom are all of things. Of whom is everything. And we in him. We are in him. And one Lord Jesus one Lord Christ. One Lord Jesus Christ. By whom are all things. I dare you to tell me Jesus is the second person in the Godhead. I make you find it. Find it. I make you find, find it. it. I dare you to tell me that the, where Jesus is a God. Yeah. Right. I make you find it where the Bible address him as a God. A, that's right. I make you lick that a God up. God knows. That's right. What he said? But to us there is but one God. What is it? The Father of whom are all things. And, and we in him. Uh -huh. And one Lord Jesus Christ by whom are all things. Uh -huh. And we by him. What's the condition of the people? How be it? There how, is, how be it? There is not, every, not in every man that knowledge. Amen. What did the Bible say? How be it? There is not in every man that knowledge. There, there's not in every man. Not in every man that knowledge. If the Bible said that knowledge is not in every man, right. then everybody can see. That's right. Jesus said, blessed are your eyes. Hallelujah. For they see. They see. They Jesus see. said, many kings, many prophets. Then another place he said, many righteous men right. desire to see those things that you now you see. see. And haven't seen them. Haven't seen them. Desire to hear those things that you now hear. That's right. And have not heard. Haven't heard of. But unto us. That's right. But unto us there is but one God. One God. Revelation, quickly. Revelation chapter 4, we're starting at verse 1. Yes. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. That means God manifests something. That's right. Yes. A door was opened in heaven to mean Jesus manifests himself. That's right. Because Jesus said, I am the door. Mm -hmm. And when you open the door, you want something to be seen on the other side. That's right. Huh? That's right. All right. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me. Yeah. Which said, come up here. Come up here. And I will show thee things which must be hereafter. I will show you things that must be hereafter. And immediately. What happened? I was in the spirit. Huh? Immediately. You got to be in the spirit. That's right. Huh? That's right. When you're in the spirit like Stephen, you'll see one. Oh, yeah. All of the prophets saw one. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. And immediately I was in the spirit. Uh -huh. And behold, a throne was set in heaven. And one, one sat on the throne. It was two up there. What they doing? Sharing the throne? <laughs> Amen. One sat. Is Jesus sitting on the lap of God? My Lord. How long is Jesus going to stand next to God? Is he getting tired? <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. You're so foolish and hell deserving. Amen. What did he say? And immediately I was in the spirit. What? And behold, a throne was set in heaven. A throne was in heaven. And one sat what? on the throne. Set on the throne. And he that sat. They that sat. He that sat. We that sat. He that sat. He that sat was looked upon. Like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow. Round about the throne. Then what? In sight like unto an emerald. Uh -huh. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. Around about the throne was four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting. Sitting, clothed. In white raiment. And they had on their head. Crowns of gold. Hold it. Yeah. Amen. Twelve plus twelve is what? Twenty-four. The 24 elders represent the Old Testament and the New Testament. You had 12 tribes of Israel. You had 12 apostles. They was arrayed in white robes, white and they had on their head crowns of gold. Yes. And letting you know that the prophets and the apostles was anointed by the self-same spirit. Right. Until Paul said, I told you no other thing but what Moses and the prophets said should come. So the 24 elders around the throne represent the Old Testament and the New Testament, how the prophets and the apostles was expired by God himself. And out of the throne, out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne. The seven lamps of fire are the seven spirits of God. Uh -huh. Which are the seven spirits of God. Yes. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And what? And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts. I saw what? Four beasts. I saw four beasts. I saw the attributes of God. Full of eyes. Full of eyes. Before and behind. Wait a minute. The eyes are before and behind. You got to have foresight and insight. That's right. That's what got to be in the preacher. That's right. You got to have foresight and insight. Uh -huh. And the first beast was like a lion. Like a lion. The Bible said, Judah, thou art he, mm -hmm. whom your brethren go and pray. Thine hand shall be in the neck of thine enemy. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's wet from the prey, my son. You're going up. You stoop down as a lion, as an old lion who shall rise him up. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a law given from between his feet until Shiloh come. Unto him shall the gathering of the people be. He looked at Judah and said, your couch as a lion. 
And that's an old lion. Who shall rise him up? So the face of a lion show you the power of God or the authority of God. And the second beast. Second beast. Like a calf. Like a calf showing you as a sacrifice. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the third beast. Third beast. Had a face as a man. Face of a man letting you know that he's going to leave exam an example, a pattern of good works. And the fourth beast. And the fourth beast. Was like a flying eagle. Like a flying eagle. He's high. He's a highly exalted God. That's right. He's a highly exalted God. That's right. All right. And the four beasts had each of them six wings, six eight, eight, wings. eight about, them. about them. And they were full of eyes full within. Full of eyes within. And they rest not day and night, saying, saying Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. What? Which was. No, 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 no. Well, you wait you missed something. Yeah, I did. Yes, I did. You must miss something. <laughs> Must have missed something. You must miss something. I must have missed something. I mean, what's the matter with you? Something some, some, some must be wrong. Something, something is wrong. Something went wrong. Do you read that again? Give, give chapter and verse. Revelation chapter 4, we're at verse 8. Says what? And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him. Yes. And they were full of eyes within. Uh -huh. And they rest not day and night. And what did it say? Saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. What else did it say? Which was and is and is to come. Yeah. No, 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 no. Amen. No. Yeah. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. No, holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, blessed Trinity. Holy, yeah. holy, holy Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. <laughs> Amen. You liars. They lied. All of you that says there are three persons, Amen. you lied. You, lied. you were tricked. You were conned. Yeah. All of those pictures. Yes. Show them pictures that I'm talking about for me, John. All those pictures, pictures. are lies. That's right. That old fellow with gray hair and a white beard. Right. That's not God. No. That little pudgy, ugly baby. That ain't Jesus. That's right. And that bird. That's right. That ain't the Holy Ghost. We ought not to think that the Godhead. Give chapter and verse. In the book of Acts chapter 17, we're at verse 29. Listen and follow me. For as much then as we are the offspring of God. We are the offspring of God. We ought not to think that the Godhead. We ought not to think. That the Godhead. That the Godhead. Is like unto gold. Like unto gold. Or silver. Or silver. Or stone. Or stone. Graven by art. Grave what? Graven by art. Graven by art. And man's device. And man's device. And the times of this ignorance. In the time when you was that stupid, that ignorant, that yeah. dumb. God winked at. He had mercy on you. But now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But now. Commandeth all men. He command all men. Everywhere. To do what? To repent. Then Peter said unto them, said no. unto them, repent, hallelujah, hallelujah, repent, and be baptized, and be baptized, every one of you, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, all right, for the remission of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, you got this to do, that's right, all of you that been taught there's three persons, leave your church, that's right, your preachers that preach it, leave them, that's right, if they teach there's more than one God, right. I don't care who they are, leave that church. That's it. Walk out. Walk out. Leave it. Leave them. Leave your position. Yeah. Save yourself. Save yourself. Anybody want to obey the word of God tonight and be baptized in water, Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus Christ, stand on your feet. Hallelujah. If you want to be baptized. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wonderful. Hallelujah. All of you that are standing, all of you that are standing, go to the back. All of you that are standing, you see where they're standing back there, go to the back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Who went? Hallelujah. All right. The numbers are still climbing, Double D. Hallelujah. Come on back tomorrow morning. Hallelujah. Better get early if you want to see. They jam packed upstairs. They jam packed down here. Hallelujah. Amen. Viewers, Hallelujah. all of you that was told there are three persons, leave your church. Leave, the church. leave your pastor. Leave him. Leave him. Your pastor's lying to you. Amen. 
They can get over the internet and holler much as they want. Yeah. When you're done, yeah. still one God. One God. Come on back tomorrow Hallelujah. so we can celebrate Hallelujah. and rejoice yeah. about our one God. Hallelujah. Let us all stand. Hallelujah. Bishop Ellis from Mississippi will close us out in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, in the all-powerful name of Jesus Christ, Lord God of heaven and earth, we want to thank you for being so good, merciful, and kind unto us. We want to thank you, Lord Jesus, for the wonderful message that went forth throughout the world. We thank you for the soul that's going down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. And we give you all the glory and praises in Jesus Christ's great and holy name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Brothers that minister, brothers, remember our meeting tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock.